On this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab, we're going to learn how a hacker could upgrade a simple Netcat listener to a fully functional terminal window. One of the most enticing targets for any hacker is to create a reverse shell onto a victim's computer. Essentially, this grants the hacker complete control over the target computer, allowing them to do things like steal sensitive information from that computer, to harness that computer's processing power for their own purposes, such as in a botnet, or even to hold that computer hostage until a ransom is paid out to the hacker. Not all reverse shells are created equally, however. Oftentimes, hackers are going to have to settle for dumb shells in the, first, in the form of netcat listeners. This is because Netcat was never meant to be a fully fledged terminal, it's just taking advantage of a simple command line utility. When hackers have to settle for dumb shells, they're missing out on lots of functionality, such as tab completion, searching through command history, and sometimes it can even lose out on the ability to use certain commands, such as sue. Today, we're gonna to learn how hackers don't have to settle for these dumb shells, and they can take advantage of some clever command line tricks in order to create a fully fledged terminal from a Netcat listener. Netcat listeners can be created in many different ways, such as creating a uh, faulty MP4 file, which we've shown off previously, but today we're just going to be doing command injection on damn vulnerable web app, which is part of Metasploitable. In order to follow this tutorial exactly, you'll need Metasploitable installed onto a computer in order to attack, and just a simple command line in order to do the Netcat reverse shell. In case you have any problems following this tutorial, you can check out the article, which is written by DRD, down below in the description. Let's get started. So in order to upgrade a dumb shell into a more full uh, feature rich shell, we're actually going to have to create a dumb shell in the first place. And I'm going to be doing that by um, exploiting damn vulnerable web application, which comes with Metasploitable, and we're going to be exploiting it with command injection. Command injection has been covered in more detail in other videos and articles, which are on Nullbyte. But today we're just going to do a brief demonstration. I'm not going to explain everything, but basically I'm sending, this is a uh, query box for a random website. And because it's misconfigured, I can send bash commands into it and it can uh, actually execute those commands. So I'm going to send it a command, which will tell it to connect to a netcat listener on uh, my attacking computer on um, Kali Linux. So in order for it to actually connect to the attacking computer, I have to create a netcat listener. And I can do that by calling uh, netcat and I'm going to specify the port I want to listen to. So I'm going to specify 5432. And then we are just going to send our command ordering the web application to connect to our netcat listener. So I'm going to do that with localhost. As you can see, I was testing it earlier, but I'm going to type it all out again for you guys. And then so localhost and then we're going to put a second netcat command. And then we have to put in the IP address of the compute or of, of the attacking computer, just so this target computer knows to connect back to us. So I'm gonna just put in that IP address really quick, 86, and that is 232. And then we just have to specify um, the port we're using, so 5432. And then we have to specify the reason bash with tag e, tag execute, bin, bash. We're going to hit submit and then immediately we should see a result on the netcat listener and then there we go. We saw that we got a connection from 192.168.86.231 which just so happens to be the metasploitable virtual machine that I'm running on this computer. And we can verify that we have a reverse shell by just typing in a simple command and as you can see with the ls command I saw some files on the web server and these are not files that are locally on my device. So I do ha indeed have a reverse shell. It's just very, very basic. As you can see, I don't even know the username. I don't know which computer I'm on. I can't even see that this is a terminal window, like there's no dollar sign or anything. So let's take a couple steps to make this a little more feature rich. So the first option, which will allow us to see who we are, as in the computer's username, and uh, where we are, like as in what computer we're on, will require Python to be installed on the target computer. We can verify that Python is installed on the target computer by typing in which and then Python. And this is just going to tell us the directory in which Python is stored into. So as you can see, um, Python is installed. If Python was not installed, it would likely return an error message saying uh, Python is not found. But it did return a valid directory, so I can be pretty confident that Python is installed. Now that we know Python is installed, we can use it to give us some more terminal features. So I'm going to do Python tax C, which just means execute the following string of command, and then I'm going to put in a little Python one-liner. 
So into quotation marks, and there you go. Um, that's one example about why a dumb shell is just really bad because I tried to hit the left arrow key to go over to here, but instead it printed a carrot, two right facing square brassic brackets and a D. So obviously that is not useful. So we can't even use the arrows in this dumb shell. This Python command won't grant that, but I'll show you some commands later in this uh, demonstration, which will show you how to uh, use keyboard commands again. So in the string, I'm going to type import PTY, which is a Python module, which allows you to have some more terminal control. And using PTY, I am going to spawn. And now, as you can see, we, our terminal got a little more advanced. We can see that uh, it thinks our username is ww-data, and that's only because we connected through dbwa, and it thinks we're at Metasploitable, which is the computer that we're at, and it also tells us the directory we're currently at. But as you can see, we still can't use commands, and this is a very fragile shell. If I put in any weird commands, then it's probably gonna break the reverse shell, and we'll lose a, a persistent connection. So this is the first step you take, but now we're gonna go ahead and do something a little bit counterintuitive, and we're gonna press Control Z, and that's gonna force this netcat listener into the background while we use our terminal again to collect some information about our actual uh, terminal software so we can feed it into the um, netcat listener pseudo terminal. So before you get started with this, I would advise that you open some kind of note taking software. I'm just opening up LeafPad just because I'm gonna have to save a couple of things that I learned from the terminal. So first we have to find out what is the exact terminal software being used. So to do that, we can just echo the terminal variable by typing an echo and then dollar sign term. And that returned x term hyphen 256 color. So I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this to my notepad. And now we can find out the dimensions of this terminal window by typing in a command raw echo. And um, this STTY doesn't, is not installed by default on Kali Linux. You just have to do an apt get for core utils and it'll, um, core utils comes with stty and that gives you information about your terminal oh um sorry sorry about that that was the wrong command um we're using stty tac a and that's gonna give us oh stty tac a and that's gonna actually give us uh, information about a terminal i'm really sorry about that but as you can see now we have 31 rows in this terminal so I'm going to type 31R and 87 columns. So 31R for 31 rows and 87C for 87 columns. So now that we know the dimensions of our terminal and we know the type of terminal we're using, um, we're going to use that command I was accidentally showing off. STTY raw tack echo. And this is going to allow us to actually use um, keyboard shortcuts in our pseudo terminal, um, like control C or even stuff like arrow keys, which you don't even realize that you can't use. And so now after we type in echo, you gotta make sure you put this command in last because we're not gonna be able to see any of our keystrokes now. And to bring our netcat listener back to the foreground, we just have to type in FG. And like I was saying, I actually did press FG onto my computer. It's just not appearing in the terminal window. You just have to trust it. So type in FG, then hit enter. And now our terminal is gonna look a little bit weird. Like you can see our command that we put in the beginning to create the netcat listener is up top again. And our cursor is in the middle of the terminal. So let's just reset it really quickly. Now it's asking us for our terminal type. So we wrote that down earlier. So I'm gonna just type it out. 256 color. So you might run into this error. I've tried this on Ubuntu and Kali Linux. On Ubuntu, I was able to do this just fine. But on Kali Linux, I just have, to, it doesn't want the 256 color part. So I just specify X term and that works. Yep. And we're back here. And then now we just have to specify the number of rows and columns. So I'm going to specify 81. Oh, so I'm um, specify rows, 81, and then columns, 87. And now uh, we have a much more feature rich terminal. Like now I can actually use the arrow keys to move around. Um, there's tab completion. And um, I can see terminal history. It starts right here. It only shows um, stuff in the pseudo reverse shell. And this is actually a much more feature rich terminal. It's much less fragile than the uh, netcat listener we had earlier. And you can actually get some work done using this reverse shell instead of a rinky dinky little netcat listener. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP, ZAP, 
WordPress Hacking and Hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst Prep Course. Check out the link in the description below. While the techniques that I just displayed in the demonstration might seem super specific, if anything, what I hope you take away from this video is that an advanced knowledge of the command line can be extremely useful in many unforeseen ways, not just related to hacking. Again, if you had any problems with the techniques that I displayed, you can check out the article which is linked down in the description for a full description of all the commands. If you have any ideas for a future video, hit me up on Twitter, at Nick Gottschall. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time on Cyber Weapons Lab.